As you can tell, I decided to do some filming outside today. Although the big question should be, why would I film outside when I'm gonna talk about a dress watch? Especially when it's already 96 degrees out and it's barely 10 a.m., which is about 35 degrees Celsius for those in other parts of the world. Well, the thing is the key word in sunburst dial is sun. And this is one heck of a sunburst dial. This is the Pagani Designs PD-2770, imported direct from China through AliExpress. It's a dress watch that, like the Orient Bambino, is a little different than the norm. Now, it's an obvious homage to Seiko's popular line of cocktail time watches, but done with the philosophy that bigger is always better. With a case size of 43 millimeters and costing in the mid 60s. Now, I don't believe these are available on Gearbest, but on AliExpress, there are eight variants three with bracelets and five with leather straps. In black, white, blue, green, and for a very bold choice, purple and rose gold. Now, I went for the blue with the bracelet, and eagerly awaited its arrival. But once I got it, there was a bit of a problem. It was broke, defective, pining for the fjords. Basically, it would run anywhere from about a minute to maybe 30 minutes. And for whatever reason, it would always stop with the second hand at the 10 o'clock position, and exactly at the 10 o'clock position. So I did a little bit back and forth with the seller for about a week before I had to elevate it to dispute and got my money back shortly after that. Now, before I decided on whether or not I wanted to order another one, I decided to open up the back and try to tinker with it a little bit. And luckily, I actually got it working. Uh, although that sounds more impressive than it actually is because it was a rather stupid fix. But I'll get to that in a little bit. Now I thought about not doing this review or ordering a second one to actually review. But I decided that reviews aren't supposed to be all good. They are supposed to be a report of your experience, good and bad. So this is how I fix the watch, and it really is a little silly. So out of curiosity, I took the case back and rotor off to get a better look. Now one thing that annoyed me was that it looks like in addition to the movement holder, there is a plastic adapter that the movement is snapped into, and then the dial is mounted to that plastic adapter, rather than directly to the movement. Anyways, so while I was being annoyed at the uh, build quality inside, I also noticed that with the case back off, the watch was actually running fine. And I happened to notice that the plastic movement ring had these little nubs sticking up, which I thought were a little tall and possibly hitting the case back, which might put pressure on the dial. So for the heck of it, I cut the nubs off and then sanded it down a little bit before putting the case back back on. And it seems to be running fine since then. Now, I'll say a little more about this later, but right now, let's take a closer look. Now, the case is a nicely rounded stainless steel. Overall, it's a rather simple design, and every single bit of it is polished. The finishing of the case is surprisingly good, with the only part that felt a little rough or sharp was inside the lugs. And that was just a little. And there is a noticeable line where the fixed bezel, which I think contains the crystal, hits the case. And as long as we are talking about the crystal, it is the second nicest thing about this watch, as it's a very nice domed Hardlux crystal, which you can see rising very sharply out of the case before it tapers off to be a dome. I would say the crystal is probably two and a half to maybe three millimeters tall. 
but you probably don't want to hear about the crystal or the case as much as you want to hear about the dial. And it is beautiful. And I don't think these pictures will do it justice. Now, as you can see, it's a highly textured sunburst dial. The coloring on this one is blue, but it's a blue gradient with the darker, very deep blue on the very edge of the dial. And it gets lighter as it gets to the center. Although the coloring can shift depending on the angle you're holding it, as well as the light that's hitting the dial. The hour indicators are metallic wedges jutting out from the case. And while it's hard to make out, the very small minute indicators are also applied. Now it's also very hard to tell, but it almost looks like the dial isn't completely flat. That at the very edge, where the minute indicators are, it looks like it starts to slope down. Although this could be the domed crystal just playing tricks with the optics. But either way, the effect is spectacular. Now also impressive is that the Pagani logo, as well as the phrase automatic, are also applied. Although I do think that they should have either had just the logo or just the name, but not both. I think it clutters the dial slightly. And if your logo is just the initials of your name, it's a little redundant to have both. Now another thing I really appreciate is that the date window at the 3 o'clock, while small, is framed instead of just being a cutout. Now the hands are silver metallic Dauphine style, with a small sliver of loom applied, which is there, but not terribly bright. I also like the length of the hands, and I think they are perfectly proportioned for this style of watch, although that does potentially lead to another issue I'll get to shortly. Now at the three, you have a nicely sized signed crown, which is about seven and a half millimeters wide, with a very good texture on it. And I should point out that this watch is hackable as well as hand windable. Now at this point, you can probably tell how much I really love that dial, but don't hit the buy button just yet. There are some serious flaws that I'm about to start talking about. Um, but they may be flaws that you can live with, or it could be that this watch has more issues than I think. Anyways, let's get back to the back, where you have an exhibition screw down case back, where the edge of the crystal sticks out just a little bit, and I can feel it if I run my fingers around there. But that's about the only complaint I have about it. Also, unsurprisingly, it only has 30 meters water resistance, so don't get it wet. Now, one other thing to note. There was a thin metal paganized sheet over the rotor, which I removed while tinkering with it, and I never bothered to put it back on. So the heart of this watch is where it starts to have issues, and where it gets a little more technical. Now it's listed as a Seagull 2813, which is actually a Chinese clone of a Miyoto 8215, but with the addition of hacking. Now both the Miyoto and its clone are generally considered to be good workhorse movements. Now the design of the Miyoto 8215 is such that it has a indirectly driven second hand. It's a feature that protects itself, where if there is any direct impact on the watch, the second hand will actually stop and then stutter and skip ahead to the correct time. You can see this if you move your wrist really fast and suddenly stop. Now the problem is that the larger your dial is and the longer your second hand is, the more likely the stutter is to occur even under normal operation. Especially when your watch is at particular angles. And for this particular Pagani, you can see it when the watch is vertical and the second hand is heading straight down. 
Now, some movements are more affected by this than others. And it is entirely possible that mine is just overly sensitive. Why it was stopping with just a little extra pressure on the dial. But I need to warn you anyways, because it is a possibility you would get one with the same stutter. Which is very disappointing that when you're admiring the beautiful details of the style and you look over and see the second hand acting like it's having a seizure. Now, another problem with the movement, and I'm hoping that it's just mine, but sometimes when you pull the crown out to set the date, it stops the watch as if you pulled the crown all the way out to change the time, but it doesn't do it all the time. Now, as for accuracy, well, I couldn't really tell you. After I got it working, it was around negative two minutes a day, but it's possible that could have been from my tinkering. Since then, I've got it down to about negative 10 seconds a day, and I think I could probably improve that. Now, I also did test the power reserve, and it ran for about 39 and a half hours. So let's get the dimensions out of the way. Now, as I said, it's 43 millimeters wide without the crown, compared to a real cocktail time at 40. It's also about 46 and a half millimeters wide without the crown, and has a lug to lug of 49 millimeters. Height wise, it's a bit tall at 14 and a half millimeters, but a good two or three millimeters of that is just the crystal. Now the straps it uses are 22 millimeters wide, and it has a very nice weight of 147 grams. Although about 85 of that is actually the bracelet. Speaking of which, the bracelet is pretty good. It's a stainless steel with solid links and a butterfly clasp. I like the design and feel of it. The finishing is quite decent and the only rough area is on the end links on the inside of the butterfly clasp. Now my only real complaint about it was that it was really dirty when I received it. And it was wrapped in plastic, but it was dirty inside the plastic. Now, other than it being a little tall, I like how it wears. The bracelet is rather comfortable. And while I usually prefer a 40 or 42 millimeter watch, the 43 millimeters here didn't bother me at all. The lugs also slope down a little to a low point on the case, which brings the watch closer to your wrist, helping it wear maybe a little bit smaller. Although truth be told, I've actually been wearing it on a NATO and a Perlon strap more than anything. While I was working on it, I really didn't want to put the bracelet back on. So I just grabbed whatever I could find, which was this blue NATO. But once I got it outside, I noticed how the darker blue edge of the dial matched the blue on the NATO strap, causing it just to blend together. So I've actually been wearing this more casually than anything else, either on that NATO or this Perlon. Now you can probably tell that my feelings on this thing are pretty mixed. Right after I fixed it, I was pretty annoyed with the whole situation. But I've worn it off and on probably a couple times a week over the last month. And over that time, I guess you could say my position softened a little bit. And I've really become taken with the look. But the key thing to remember about me is that in the end, the only thing this cost me was my time. Now the dial is beautiful and the case is fairly well done. And if the watch hadn't arrived effective, and it didn't have that stutter, I think it would easily be worth what they're asking. I would even say that if they put a better movement in it, like a Seiko NH35A, it would really be something special, even at an increased cost. But I can't ignore the fact that it did arrive effective, as well as that annoying stutter. Now, it's my belief that the movement holder and that adapter for the dial are flawed in their design. 
just from the simple fact that a few millimeters of plastic could cause a critical failure. Now when I first fixed this watch, I kind of thought of it as a tragedy, that something so beautiful could be crippled by something so stupid. Although the bigger issue is that stutter, and it's a deal killer for many, myself included. But I also can't help but think that if they'd actually kept the watch to 40 millimeters, the stutter might not have been as big an issue. Although to be honest, after spending a month with it, I haven't actually minded the stutter quite as much as when I first fixed it. When I'm looking at it, I'm actually much more interested in how the light is playing with the dial, rather than what the second hand is actually doing. So, while my tone has actually softened over the last month, my opinion on this has not. It's that I can't really recommend you buy one. Rather than being a tragedy, it's more like that crazy redhead you knew back in school. While beautiful to look at, she wasn't exactly playing with a full deck. So, best to keep your distance. And in this case, I think the Bagini design needs to go back to the drawing board and have a few kinks worked out. My real recommendation would be that you save your money and get a real cocktail time. Which I know is not really the whole point of these homage watches. Now, it is entirely possible that there's more wrong with mine than I think. And it's possible you could order one and it would be just fine. And I know there's some people that are willing to take that risk. So if you are one of those and you get one and it's fine, let me know in a comment and I'll pin it at the top for everyone else to see. As for me, I gotta get out of the sun, get a cold drink and some air conditioning. But before I go, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for coming and I'll see you next time.